Hey guys, it's Bridget and Drago back again for Dive Ventures. Today we're coming at you with part three of our series, I'm Scuba Certified, Now What? So we've got you into some continuing education classes. We've talked about planning trips, and now we're talking about kind of the last piece to bring it all together, which would be completing your scuba system and owning your own gear. You already have your scuba starter pack, right? right. But now it's time for the big items. If you start getting to, into your own gear now and getting used to your gear and getting comfortable in your gear, it's going to make you a more confident diver and a safer diver. The first thing that we want to talk about is going to be your air delivery system. Now this is going to be your regulator, which only comes out of the box with a first stage and second stage. Mm -hmm. First stage being what connects to your tank and then the second stage what you're breathing off of. It's going to be that in conjunction with a low pressure inflator hose and an octopus which is gonna be the yellow hose that hangs off of your regulator as well. The air delivery system is gonna allow you to breathe underwater. We've got several different options for yeah, I think we have like 20 different regulators out on the wall right now. And there's several different brands too that offer different features when it comes to your comfort, when it comes to warranties, and also in your servicing. Yeah, and a lot of those other features that Bridget just pointed out, some may have a swivel. So when you move, it's gonna reduce jaw fatigue. Well, other brands are gonna have a MyFlex hose. With that braided hose, it's gonna be very braid. flexible. Um, so that's gonna do the same thing, depending on what they're made out of. Some may be like brass or titanium mm -hmm. or uh, there's carbon, just fiber. carbon yeah, fiber. There's carbon ones out there. Um, so obviously that's gonna change the price point a little bit. Same with the alternate air source. Many mm -hmm. of you were probably training in our rental gear and you're used to the air sharing with an Octo. You, you've got that procedure set down, you know how to work it. So that's maybe the way that you wanna go with your alternate. There's also the, what's called an air source that is also offered over several different brands. Most of them have one. And that's like your standard inflator and your Octo had a baby. So now it's all in one piece that's sitting right here. That'll also reduce the number of hoses coming off your regulators. It, it, maybe you get an Octo to start with. Um, they're not super expensive. Five years from now, maybe you do want to flip over to an air source. That is something that can be added on later. Yeah. You don't have to do all of these things at once. Absolutely. Um, it's just going to come down to, once again, your comfort level. But let's move into yeah. your information systems. That's going to be your dive computer. There's so many different options for that as well. So many different options. Any of you from your training will remember that the dive computer is king because it goes everywhere that you are in the water. And the single most important piece of information you're getting is your no decompression time. So how much time you have at each depth that you're at keep you going from going into that deco that nobody wants to do. Right, and you have some that are gonna be what we call air integrated or AI. Mm -hmm. And when you have an air integrated computer, that computer will always tell you how much air you have in your tank. Now that is a vital piece of information, mm -hmm. but how we go about that can be a little different. You have a wrist mount computer like this one here, um, but it's gonna have a pod or a transmitter that plugs into your regulator mm -hmm. that's gonna transmit the air to your computer and that's how it's gonna tell you. And that's completely wireless. So again, just mm -hmm. like the air source that does take an additional hose off of your regulator, which many people find advantageous, but it's definitely not the only option. We do have computers that are connected to a hose that goes directly into your first stage. If you're used to kind of looking at a gauge, if that kind of makes sense for you, but but even that's not the only, those aren't the only two options you have either. <laughs> no, and maybe you don't want to spend a lot of money on the dive computer because you just want to know your no decompression limits, your no fly time. Um, you want it you to know. log your dives, could be yep. everywhere in the water that you are. You want something you can take with you that has all that information on there. There are uh, computers that are not air integrated, so they're just, just going to be giving you all your numbers. And then if you do need to still see your air, which we all do, you have very affordable options such as just a quick pressure gauge that you can, again, attach to your regulator. So you're getting all your dive data off that computer, but your air is then on a nice analog pressure mm -hmm. gauge. And sometimes those pressure gauges are built in with a compass, sometimes mm -hmm. they're just the pressure gauge. They'll have a depth gauge. Sometimes they'll have a depth well. gauge. So Tons a lot of, of different varieties there as well. But it comes down to, once again, your comfort level. What makes right. sense for you. And again, like if you're working on a budget, there, that's definitely a great option to go to as well. And yep. you could always upgrade to something later if you see fit. What we need to talk about is going to be your buoyancy system, right? This is going to be your BCD, mm -hmm. your buoyancy compensator device. Yeah. We have a lot of those options too, Bridget. We sure do. Yes. <laughs> So in your class, you probably were diving with a jacket style BC, mm -hmm. which means that you're going to have air on the sides. You're going to have air oh, around air the back. Right around here. So it's like you're sitting in a wonderful lazy boy chair when you're at the surface Especially of the when water. You're at the surface. Yeah, <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to keep you upright, which is great for instructors. Um, that used to be the main style that we used back mm -hmm. when I got certified, yeah, and that's what I got used to diving to be with. The only name in the game was jacket style inflation yeah. system. Um, there's also like the 
the BC you were using in class was also weight integrated as well. So you had these nice little weight pockets with handles on that you could ditch that weight or change things around as needed. Previous versions of BCDs didn't include that weight integration and you would have to use a weight belt. Yep. Now we don't have to do that. Man, I don't miss <laughs> rolling into my weight belt. I sure don't. Or the weights <laughs> moving around. And not only do we have jacket style, you also have back inflate BCs as well. All of the air is put on your back, which underwater is gonna help keep you in that diver position. It's gonna keep you nice and trim. So this way you can go dive and not feel like you're being pushed down a little bit. And you really don't have to do as much weight maneuvering. Mm -hmm. Some of the BCs that we have, they not only have the weight pockets here, but they will have trim pockets on the band that holds your tank. So you can really make you know, like micro you know, tune your buoyancy when you're in the water yeah. if you need to change where your weights are. Even weight distribution. Mm -hmm. Depending on how much weight you need to carry, maybe you don't want all of it on the front of you, right. so you can move some to the back. If you're like me, maybe your legs are a little bit more buoyant, so your legs start floating up. We even have ankle weights that you can strap yeah. on too to just make adjustments to get you in that nice trim position and make all your diving a lot easier. Depending on your wants and your desires and your needs. Your specific needs, we what can, you like. Yeah, we can make adjustments throughout mm -hmm. the entire thing. We did have one more thing. It exposure system. So that's most likely going to be a wetsuit. Yeah. Um, wetsuits, once again, you have a big variety, different brands, different types, uh, different features in each one. Different thicknesses. Different thicknesses. Materials. Yep. And depending on what type of diving that you're planning on doing most often, whether it be in lakes and quarries mm -hmm. or maybe the Florida Springs or the Caribbean Florida Keys, diving. Caribbean <laughs> diving, will determine what kind of wetsuit that you're going to want to get. Mm -hmm. My personal recommendation is just to have a full wetsuit. Yep. Shorties have their time and place when they're cut off at the elbows and the knees, but ultimately for environmental protection out of the wetsuit, mm -hmm. I prefer to have full coverage so this way I don't find any stingy things or fire coral. Rocks, Rocks yeah, like right? anything like that, especially if you're doing shore diving, that bottom's not always nice and flat, so mm -hmm. you could be rolling around a little bit. So having that protection, especially on the elbows and knees is great. Being uncomfortable at 30, 40, 50, 60 feet is not the time to be uncomfortable. No. You wanna be able to get in the water, know that you're comfortable in your gear. So this way it takes that worry or concern mm -hmm. out of the back of your mind so you can go enjoy your dive. So you're having you fun because that's why you signed up for this. You wanted to have fun. You wanted to see something different. From the current setup that you have now to what you have in the future, those items don't become obsolete. No. Right? Don't they're going to either them out or trash no, them or sell them. <laughs> no, they're going to be your redundant computer, uh, your backup. It's going to be maybe a pressure gauge that you don't dive with on the initial dive, but if anything ever failed, you had it in your save a dive mm -hmm. kit. Um, or if somebody else on the boat needs it, you have something there that may be able to help them. As you dive more, you do start building in more redundancies into your kit. Um, but just starting out, you know, what you start with, you can still end up diving with later down the line. So that gear doesn't just go away or become obsolete to you. It's still gonna be there for you if needed. Absolutely. See you soon.